I come with good news. Or as uh, one of your most famous artists, Brian Rutenberg, would say, come over here, I've got something to show you. <laughs> Look him up if you don't know him. He's absolutely brilliant if you like abstract paintings. Well, this is a big one, uh, praise God. I'm going to start off with that um, video that I did the other day, and um, I'm not going to play any of it. I just want to read the words and concentrate on why... Um, if this really is 107, I don't know, I don't watch his stuff, but why they would pick on Anne Rand, Atlas Shrugged, okay? So here we have it, because I believe it's all about this U.S., this alien, um, the alien connection, which the church has convinced everyone is demons. So this is at the two, one minute part, two, two, oh, one minute, and this is on the, I'll show you the best is yet to come. Nobody but Jesus 107 inspired. The serpent, so we don't know who's written this. You know, this is just classic how they work. You know, it's absolutely decepting, deceptive. The serpent is another name he goes by. Serpents come from the reptilian line of species, which just happens to parallel our world's propagandized idea that aliens are reptilian. So if Lucifer isn't human, and if he was able to beguile Eve, well, we know Lucifer isn't a human, don't we? God told us what, that he is a fallen angel. Um, and if he was able to beguile Eve so that the two of them fathered Cain, after which Eve taught Adam the trick, well, you'd hardly think, you know, uh, <laughs> Adam, God gives Adam a woman and she has to teach him the trick. <laughs> I don't think so. But, you know, I mean, this is just the silliness of it all, isn't it, really? Okay. Eve taught Adam the trick, and she also conceived Adam's child, Abel. That would make the two boys twins from two different fathers in just one birth cycle. Then we'd really be looking at a situation where the same fight that's been going on since Genesis is still being fought today, and it continues to be about which bloodline inherits the earth. All right, it says here, aliens are a propagandized rebranding of demons. Interdimensional, no, not extraterrestrial. All right. Now this is lies. You know, so the aliens are a propagandized rebranding of demons. Interdimensional, not extraterrestrial. Okay. We all know demons do not have bodies. They live in you, um, and. Now, I also want to, um, this is this John Todd. Um, I do not know anything better at allowing demons to enter you than meditation. So this is the, I believe, the new age guy who's been set up. Now, this here also is a picture of the, one of those grey aliens. And see how they have put it with, with the, um, what's his name? Is that Manly P. Hall there? And um, trying to make the two demons. So this I found this in my um, Nasara book here. And it talks about these, um, what is about to happen. Because we all know that all throughout um, history, we have had these big, great big beings, you know, the... the Th you know, through through the paintings, there'll be these these the great big aliens. They, they look like angels, and that's because that's what they are, and they're called watchers. But they're trying to confuse the two here, so that you know when it, when it happens, and it is going to happen, um, all the Christians are going to go into a, a, a you know a state of shock, and uh, you know you know believe it's all um, demonic, um, but. As it shows in here, that the first, the first time that um, demons were, so I'll, I'll just re read here, many UFOs are fake, so my understanding is that, for example, a lot of the so-called UFOs are just sophisticated earth-based secret art 
aircraft that aren't available to the public at large. And that's exactly true. That's what um, Hitler and that had, and you know what is down in Antarctica. Um, in alien abduction, may be from PLFs owned by the cabal. Okay, PLFs are programmable life forces, and this is what they maintain that these, you know funny-headed ones with the great big eyes are. It says, okay, in Hidden Truth, Forbidden Knowledge, Dr. Stephen Greer of the Disclosure Project reveals compelling insider testimony that UFO abductions are being carried out by so-called programmable life forms, okay, PLFs, owned by the cabal. There are no reports of alien abduction prior to the early 1960s with the infamous Betty and Barney Hill case. This appears to be when the PLF technology was first perfected and put into, into use. All ET contacts in the 1950s were with positive humans. Throughout the 1950s, there were extensive reports of people having direct contact with benevolent, 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 human-looking ETs who told them of a coming golden age. These ETs appear to be the same people who appeared in ancient civilizations around the world and were labelled as gods or angels. Many of these 1950s contacts occurred in the US and Canada and were carried and compiled by Wilbert B. Smith. What's the time here? Oh, bother. Um, a Canadian government worker with classified clearance. An entirely separate set of positive contacts occurred in Italy and were the subject of the TV documentary The Friendship Case, in which key first-hand witnesses broke their silence and spoke about the events they experienced. This is interesting for me because when I had my first death, first death experience in Cambridge, the same thing happened. That was when they, it was about 2007 or 8 or 8 or 9, and when they first released the, um, released the, you know, the files, you know, the Air Force files and that, and, and um, to the public that had been, you know, kept secret. And I was watching a news item on the, you know, on the news, and then, um, as you do, <laughs> Um, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, about that, it was showing that, and then all of a sudden it was just gone, and I was in not the beginning of the, the sports, you know, because at the end of our news we have sports, we used to, I don't know, I haven't watched it for years, um, but, you know, so, but it wasn't the beginning of the sports, it just cut, gone, and we were in the middle of a sports story, so it was, you know, strange wasn't it that uh, and that's why I believe that uh, you know I don't know New Zealand who we are controlled by okay many of these um, da -da -da, uh, da -da -da, the friendship case a great deal of valuable information about both the US and Italian context can be found in 1950 human ETs prepare us for a golden age at I will show you Biological robots used to fight the positive ETs with fear. Okay, so here is the um, Earl. That's obviously David Steele, I'd say. He's tiny Earl. What? Not that I know what it is. So you can get get that down there. Um, so as you can see, it's the same same thing with the. Um, um, Crop circles, you know, they're here, they're real. They're not here to harm us, obviously. They're giving us messages, but it talks in here that, that they will not, um, that you will, will not be able to, um, you will not be able to have contact with them until you rise spiritually, you know, that they don't speak, but and, um, you know, just like angels uh, don't speak, but when you rise, you will have telepathic, communications with them but um you know it's whether you have risen risen like this so anyway i'm off off topic what else oh okay so why um are they um 
after Ayn Rand? Well, just as it says in this book that um, tries, it tries to assert that, that, uh, that the book Atlas Shrugged is a, a global plan, a takeover. You know, the, the fake Christians are... Yeah, the dumb heck is the thing. Okay, uh, now trying to put the fear of God into you. Um, so here, oh. okay, you saw it the other day. There it is, the blooming thing. Mm. And, um, ah, so I put it there and it won't go. Oh, you can see it, can't you? Wonderful. Okay, trust me, and Rand. <laughs> and I've read the book. And it's the absolute opposite to what they're claiming. And this whole, you know, demonising Philip de Rothschild. Look him up while you're at it because he looks like a really good guy. And just as it says that the, these people here with, with St. Germain have, were all children of extremely rich, rich families who um, have put all this money aside, you know, and have been working to save the world all these years. Now, Philip Rothschild, de Rothschild was a, um, a Grand Prix driver, he was a, a writer, a poet, um, an all-around achiever, and by the sound of it, he is anything but like what the um, the normal Rothschilds are painted out to be. But, um, you know, the cabal is those, the, those that want to keep us. I mean, who'd, who'd want my job, hey? <laughs> Coming to tell you, hey, take this guy off the cross, Take him off the cross, and um, you know, and, and stop idolizing him. You know, you are now filled with his Holy Spirit if you believe in him, and he wants you to do this. He wants you to stand on your own two feet. So, you know, what's stopping all this? It's religion. What's stopping you rising to the occasion? It's the cabal controlling you through religion. And that book by Anne Rand actually talks about. Unbelievable. Actually, talks about um, this new world that was going is going to be built by the few that survive, and and they are in this valley, and you know, and, and but they have to, they have all achieved, they have all risen to this height, and they are now separated by the from these masses who you know just deserve to be exterminated. Okay, so. But what is happening um, uh, that I find most interesting at the moment is the, the Britain, the Britain um, connection. And some of you may have remembered the, the dream I had of um, Royal Britannia. I, this was on the 11th of June, 2020. Okay, here you have it. And this takes me back so long that I'm just finally understanding everything that the Lord is was telling me, you know, about, you know, and I can't find it, it's so old, but um, I will I will find it. And that is this woman, maybe it's in this one, it might be in this one, it's the only one I haven't looked at. Um, it's this woman called, um, oh, you, you'll all know, um, <clears throat> Lorna Doon, the story of Lorna Doon. And... Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, and, and oh, it's about, you know, sort of ha her having to go away, having to leave her home and um, then coming, you know, this is my dream, not the real story, um, and then having to come back, you know, this long, long journey. And I'm finally realising what it's talking about now and why I have been, um, why I have been dreaming of um, Prince Charles, you know, even Camilla and now uh, the last one I had with Camilla, that she was actually um, the one, and my daughter, I remember the other day, because I remember when Philip handed her, and I think it was the Order of the Garter, and um, and I knew that was very significant, but they didn't do it together, they did it, you know, miles apart, and uh, it is now her time, because of course, why? What would be her, oh, I just don't believe it. What would be her significance? You know, I'm not a fan of Camilla, I can assure you. Um, but what what does she actually signify? She signifies the bride-to-be, 
doesn't she? So in actual fact, she signifies us, whether we like her or not, you know, because she's what well, is going to be the bride of um, of the the new king, you know. But in my dreams, um, they're all telling me that no, that I'm telling her, um, or not her, but um, Prince Charles and and um, and. Uh, And even here it is. I'll show you this. Uh, Prince Charles and, and, and William and all the rest of it that they're not going to have their have their position. So I came across this guy who I really like. Never seen him before. Somebody gave me his um his link. Thank you very much. But so it's all Johnny Enlow. London Bridge is falling down. And he, it's about the system that is ending, and that is what this Lorna Doon, I mean, the Lord is so, you know, takes such a long time before he brings these things to pass, you know, but today I just was, I'm absolutely amazed at what he has shown me uh, to do with the Revelation, you know, the Revelation uh, um, 12 sign, you know, and I think I painted that one and I had the vision on my birthday and I think it was 2011, it was um, a long, long time ago, but um, what does what does the um, this one here? Eleventh of June. So there you've got two, four. You've got eleven. That's the gates. So that's two, 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 three twos. So that's the Holy Spirit. Three twos. That yeah, very, very important day for me to be having that. Um, and of course, it's twenty twenty vision. So I was inside an unknown house at a beach. So a beach is in front of the sea, that the sea represents the world. And I was in an unknown house. An unknown house is, you know, it is, it's not my familiar, you know, my familiar place that the Lord is, uh, you know, is bringing me to a different understanding, a different, you know, life. I heard someone start singing Royal Britannia. I went to join them. The others with this, I went to join them. The others with the man all started after we joined hands. I was part of the circle of strangers, but then I saw someone I knew and stood with them. Praise God. So, you know, I looked up Royal Britannia. Why is it so important? It's amazing. And it goes back to what I'm... You know, the whole Lorna Doon, Lorna Doon, and who is the real king? This is the whole thing. Who is the real king? And some of you might remember the dream I had the other night being married to the crown prince. So I'm just going to show you that now. But um, here are the lyrics. When Britain first at heaven's command arose from out the Urzur main, that's blue, I was wondering where I saw that word, this was the charter of the land and guardian, guardian angels sang the strain, rule Britannia, rule the ways, Britons never will be slaves, the nations not so blessed as thee must in their turns to tyrants fall, while thou shalt flourish great and free, the dead and envy of the dread and envy of them all, rule Britannia, oh golly, rule Britannia, rule the waves, Britons never will be slaves, Still more majestic thou shalt rise, more dreadful from each foreign stroke, as the loud blast that tears that tears the skies serves but to root thy native oak. Rule Britannia, rule the waves. Britons never will be slaves. The height, the haughty tyrants ne'er shall tame all their attempts to bend thee down, will but arouse thy generous flame. But work their woe and thy renown. Rural Botana, rule the ways, Britons never will be slaves. To thee belongs the rural reign, thy city shall with commerce shine, all thine shall be the subject main, and at every shore it, sh it circles thine. Rural Britannia, rule the ways, Britons never will be slaves. The muses still with freedom found shall to thy happy coast repair. Blessed isle with matchless beauty crowned and many hearts to guard the fair. Rule Britannia, rule the waves. Britons never will be slaves. Amen. 
So I now wanted to take you to the significance of my dream the other night of the Crown Prince of Macbeth. You remember, um, I'll just tell you the last part of it. You, um, you can go and look up my other video if you want to check out the rest of it. But the last part was, um, I, then I was in a small cafe and the Crown Prince and she were both there and we chatted. So she was the, the woman that helped me up there. Well, she wasn't, she's the Holy Spirit. Helped me climb up to the top of the roof. Then they left for a while and I too left and went to another cafe. This time a much bigger, brighter one. And later they too arrived. There, I joked, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, go to the next part. The crown prince and I then went to a Muslim prayer house where those inside had been playing with balloons. Some were stuck to the ceiling and the prince said it was not appropriate for them to be there. Okay, now this is what is so interesting that I found today. Then there was talk of my birth and the fact that at the time I was born, a comet or meteor flew overhead. And when they heard this, they all looked at me strangely and said I was the Messiah. And they started chanting and praying. There were no rugs on the floor, just red carpet. They knelt down on that and prayed out in loud chants. It was quite beautiful and very moving. Okay, so what did I find today? Unbelievable. So please look it up. And most of you will know, you know, this sign here. Okay, so you guys... This is my purpose, as I said. Who'd, who'd want the job? <laughs> who'd want the job of saying, bring Jesus off the cross <laughs> to the world of Christians? <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, that's since um, Clem Clement failed at it, that was his job, now it's gone to me. You know, and you know that's the Lord's perfect sign. You know, it can't be repeated. Those years have happened, those signs have happened. But guess what? There was, did you know that there was a comet also associated with that, the, the Revelation um, 12 angel, uh, woman in heaven? I didn't either. And it's amazing. So you can look it up. Okay. So this is the direct correlation of the timing. So that we have here 16 years. So it's like 16 years that this comet comes in. And would you believe it that this comet, which looks just like a sperm, actually started 2,000 years ago when Christ was born. So this they call this the Conception uh, Comet, or it's actually a Russian, a Russian guy was the one that found it. Um, so it's 2017, um, you know, it, it's just unbelievable. And it, it, uh, co it, it corresponds to... The day that I prophesied, you know, when two days after Trump's election, where the Lord told me there was going to be an earthquake, or oh, no, he did not say that, sorry, sorry. He said something huge was going to happen on the Monday. And, uh, you know, that's so what I've said time and time, you know, so many times that, um, that his name is Borisov. So it's Comet Borisov, so you can look that up. But um, what I also found really interesting too, that everything that's written in here, which I'll try and read as much as I can, was um, came from, so you, you, you can't see it, I know. I'll, I'll put it up really close, maybe you will. You'll just be able to see that word down there. So some of it you will remember. When I had my death experience, I um, got my husband because you know, I had I went out to, into trances in and out. The last two times I went into a trance, I said these words. I just repeated them twice, you know. So, you know, I, I would just and then just. So I got my husband said write these down, and um, this is the last word. And I always just even forgot this word, and it was Bullinger. And you must admit, Bullinger is not a very un, um, common name. Bullinger is the man who wrote Witness of the Stars, you know, prophesying all this. So uh, let's have a look. What can I... Um, 
So this actually talks, which I, you know, I have said that I believe because I did find out after the earthquake, you know, that uh, that was when Jupiter went into uh, the womb of Virgo, but uh, it, the actual conception. You know, I, I believe that the earthquake must have represented or must have been the actual physical act, you know, because the oh, here's the, the main point of this of this illustration will strongly suggest that the point of the insemination occurred on November the 17th, 2016, by this comet. This comet can be likened to a metaphor or a single sperm that coincided with the movement of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo three days later. So as we all know, when, when uh, after the sex act, that it takes it can take up to a week before the actual um, sperm and the egg, you know, come together. This comet can be likened. Oh, I've done that. Um, so, although the notion would seem absurd, absurd to some, the prophetic implication is highly suggested to be a contributing piece of the Revelation 12 great sign picture. The comet was first discovered by Gennard de whatever, I don't even go there, um, Crimea on March the 1st, 2017. The comet was designated C-2017E1 Borisov. It was publicly announced by CB. ET on March the 4th, my mother's birthday, 2017. CBET is the Central Bureau for Astronomical Cataloging of Transient Astronomical Events. The discovery was made using three unfaltered da 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 da, da. Okay, so what does, when do we talk, we talk about, so you can look this up. This is five doves. Um, the direct correlation of the timing of comet, whatever, appearance in 2017 adds to the various prophetic pieces of the Revelation 12 sign that reinforces the typo typo typology given in the vision of the Apostle John of how a woman, woman is pregnant and gives birth as a sign in the heavens. Okay, now this also, you know, remember the video I've just done of Bonnie talking about um, Trump standing in a, bo in a John boat. I mean, I don't know what a John boat is, but of course, as we know, the boat is is like Noah's boat. The boat is salvation. So here he is standing and holding the fish and it's a John boat. So this is obviously represents not his middle name, although that is his middle name, but this is the John. He's standing in the boat of Revelation. Um, all right, so there's a lot of stuff here. Okay. It lends credibility that, in fact, such an astronomical de depiction is part of the divine orchestration of the great sign of heaven that is perhaps going down in history as being the greatest sign, at least astronomically, of the church age. The first observation of the illustrated trajectory of comma C2017 E1 is that it originates in the constellation of Cancer, which is the tribulation. The following are some of the technical particulars of the comet's observable variables. Okay, so it's all down. Um, Oh, here it is. The, prof the prophetic significance of the Cancer constellation will be briefly presented to give the reader the foundation for the subsequent correlations. Biblically spe speaking of the apparent insemination of Virgo by this comet type, it would stand to reason that if the Revelation 12 sign is one of a pregnancy, a woman, and a subsequent birth, what would the typology of such a cause look like or be. The comet comes from Cancer and has been in per perpetual retrograde there even before Christ's birth. It stayed there until about the year 2000 when it reached the solar system and was at the point in time also that it started to approach Leo. 
According to the research of E.W. Bullinger, the witness of the stars, the constellation of Cancer has a biblical theme. It is part of the theory of how the plan of redemption of Jehovah for humanity found in Jesus Christ is encoded in the signs of the stars of the heavenlies. It is theorized that this plan is etched as a storyline of the Maseroth specifically. Cancer speaks of the Messiah's redeemed possession, um, uh, possessions. <clears throat> Very exciting. And um, go in and look this up. It's amazing. And um, you know how, how could I have known? I, there's just no way <clears throat> I could have known. But guess what? <clears throat> God is so good. The other part of this dream, you know, as I told you, um, you know, I actually went to look up the crown prince of Denmark, you know, because I thought, why is he significant? And, uh, oh, God, I don't have water. Uh, plain too. Oh. And uh, found a lot on him and saw him and his wife, you know, trotting around in their carriage and all the rest of it. And I fell under the sway of the old, you know, royal patriotism garbage. But then there was just something niggling at me. And for some reason, I just started thinking, you know, who was it? Who I just started thinking of Shakespeare. And I couldn't quite, you know, I thought, who, who was Macbeth? Who was um, Hamlet? Who well, it was Macbeth I was thinking of, I think, mainly. So I just looked up. And voila, yes, I was right. That was the Crown Prince of Denmark. And uh, But then I found something even more interesting. So if you, if you read the story, what I found was that uh, Macbeth, um, so I, I'll try not to get it. I'll, 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 so you've got Macbeth and you've got Hamlet. Because as it turns out, so it says, the original story is full of wonderful details that show the cunning of the Scots and Macbeth, who slaughtered an entire Danish army, not by brute force, but by cunning, first mixing a sleeping potion and sending it like the Trojan horse as a gift to the enemy army. Once they were asleep, Macbeth was able to kill them easily. Okay, then I also, but then I, I kept looking and I found that that story, you know, was actually, um, I don't want to go there. That story, um, I'll be, I could, could get it all mixed up. Turns out, turns out, also look up Macbeth, the, there's a real king, Macbeth. So this, um, okay, here. So William Shakespeare Hamlet. Prince of Denmark, right? So there is a, was actually a real Macbeth, and guess what I found out? That I'm related to him, King Macbeth. And this King Macbeth um, comes from my Nile, the line of Nile. And he, you know, I mean, you could not, when you read his history and read his bi you know, biography, you couldn't find, <laughs> you know, um, so, someone more like Trump, you know, the skullduggery around him and his goodness through it all. You know, he was just the epitome of goodness and righteousness. And, uh, <clears throat> oh my gosh, and there's also a plague in London, of course, at the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, <laughs> Just so many, you know, correlations you just would not believe, you know. Uh, you know, they say, was it truth is stranger than fiction? And uh, so, anyway, so uh, King Nile, um, of course, you know, my, 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 my ancestor, King Nile, I mistakenly said, like Scotland, although the whole Scottish Irish thing was joined back then. And um, you can see there, you know, just the whole simile of, you know, Trump overcoming the whole lot, you know, and it because it actually turns out that um, Malcolm, which believe it, I've got a cousin called Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm, his own um, Mac Hamlet's Hamlet's own son. No, 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 sorry, Macbeth. I'll look up the real King Macbeth. King Macbeth. Yes, yeah, so. So Shakespeare, 
Shakespeare, you know, seems to have actually written a story, it must have been based around these people, but he's actually sort of twisted, you know, twisted the the um, the story. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get you anything, although you can have a look at this. Macbeth, King of Scotland. Um, Red King was King of Scots from 1040 until his death. Okay, so he's referred to, referred to the Kingdom of Alba, and of course this it all comes to do comes back to the 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 war between the Stuarts and. Um, Little is known about Macbeth's early life, although he was the son of Findlach of Moray and may have been a grandson of Malcolm II. He became more mayor of Moray, a semi-autonomous lordship, in 1032 and was probably responsible for the death of the previous mayor, Gilead Gawain. Da 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 da. Okay, Duncan. Right, so... Okay, Macbeth was killed. In 1040, Duncan I launched an attack into Moray and was killed in action by Macbeth's troops. Macbeth succeeded him as King of Alba, apparently with little opposition. His 17-year reign was mostly peaceful, although in 1504 he, fa he fa was faced with an English invasion led by Sawad Earl of Northumbria, on behalf of Edward the Confessor. Macbeth was killed at the Battle of Lumphanen, 1007, by forces loyal to the future Malcolm III. He was buried on Iona, the traditional resting place of Scottish kings. Macbeth was initially succeeded by his stepson, Lulach, but Lulach ruled for only a few months before also being killed by Mal Malcolm um, III, whose descendants would rule Scotland until the late 13th century. Macbeth is today best known as the main character of William Shakespeare's tragedy, Macbeth, and the many works that it has inspired. Okay, so if you go even to... Um, Macbeth and even to um, oh, Hamlet, you'll find um, you know stories that's you know very much like Donald John Trump, and I believe that's where we're at. That the real throne was usurped. You know that um, Macbeth was killed by his own son, so that is not a righteous. Um, government, just as General Milley, you know, with the strike on, you know, 10 innocent people, and he has the audacity to call it a righteous strike. So I believe that this is a symbol for us. That And that was why Trump went to, to uh, England and, um, you know, Put, um, dragged the royal family around with a ring through their noses, and um, because uh, you know to tell them their time was over, and with good reason. So, where am I? Do I want to? So, have you got that? That it's just isn't God amazing? You know, t telling me this, and so it takes me right back to the, to the Lorna story where he's telling me, you know that. It, that the true, the true kingdom, the true kingship is being returned, you know. And this also reminds me of the dream, and I did the video that that um, Donald was going to go and live in Scotland and go, go to his castle in Scotland and never, never come out again. So, you know, this is where we're at. So please, you know, take heart. We are so close. I really believe it. And I just wanted to, um, oh, okay, just wanted to, tell you also again about um, I've got my Aslam dream here or do I want to show you that one there you know that represents I've told you that one a lot of times but I even I just found this one here ah oh, these things I tried so hard I put, even put even put sticky tape on so I wouldn't lose my place so this one here is 29th of uh, December 2020 and this is just 
here a little one of Trump that I've just found and you've got to read it symbology, symbolically so I really want to encourage you to really start nutting out your dreams and asking the Holy Spirit to give them to you last night I dreamt of Trump and I together in a narrow bed I was blowing in his ear and he could resist me no longer we were in the Tiffany Hotel okay so here we have the Tiffany thing again and you know what Tiffany means? It means God emerging you know, so this was meant to, in my first dream of the Aslam, I was on his back. I will read it to you, actually. I just remember a part of it. That, that's right. Because it was just so amazing that this actually came up yesterday on my Facebook. My, um, a memory, one of, you know, one of my memories. And it was, um, okay. Me actually, you know, reading out this dream. So what is the date now? I wonder if it's, anyway. So last night I dreamed of Trump and I together in a narrow bed. I was blowing in his ear and he could resist me no longer. Um, I was blowing in his ear. Oh, sorry. We were in the Tiffany Hotel in the Tiffany Suite and we were in the single bed of one of two young men whose room it was. They were now sharing the other single bed opposite. I wonder what that means. Trump was trying to remain faithful to his wife, but now accepting the inevitability of our union, union, and he started speaking of my familiarity and how he was sure he knew me from somewhere. I said, of course he knew me, as we had been together a long time ago. This dream left me feeling very happy. All right, so and I hope you understand the symbology of that, just the one, the one single bed, you know, that um, everything... <laughs> Everything that, that Jesus did, you know, the whole fulfillment of it is now upon us. So I just wanted now to tell you the very high, high pole. So this one here is um, way back in, um, it was uh, Friday 26th of July 2019. I was at the top of a very, very high pole with Dennis, what have I put in righteousness, or oh, pole of righteous, I knew it was a very righteous pole, um, when, with, with Dennis, when the part I was on started to bend and we realised it was going to break, it was a great achievement to be there and I had taken, it had taken a lot of courage to get there, the book by Anne Rand was brought to mind as the pole started to splinter and I thought I would fall to my death. Then I was falling through the blue, blue sky. Remember this poem? The azure sky. It went on and on, and all I could do was pray in tongues and let myself go. There was no fear. I accepted the inevitable and decided to just enjoy the experience and knowledge I would soon meet my maker. The fall into the blue sky seemed endless with much time to pray and praise the Lord. And eventually I decided to try to turn myself around and instead of going head first, I was holding a piece of, of sling. And when I managed to turn myself upright, it became a kind of parachute which slowed my fall just enough to save me. So, I mean, there's just... Okay, here's another, the next one that night. Well, that says Saturday, so it's next night. Taking my place in a church auditorium, looking down at the stage, didn't know if there was a seat for me, but when I went down and found one beside Sue Peacock. Um, so I will just go to my Aslam, my okay? case. This is the 17th of September. Um, then I dreamed I was playing some kind of, and this is interesting also, the first dream that night, the 17th of September, in one dream I was in bed reading when Pommies, the Pommies, my Pommy neighbours, arrived. I'd never ever, you know, made, thought that connection at all. You know, these are the people that caused me nothing but grief. Um, <laughs> Uh, they arrived with their kids, one who was swinging a large pot close to the front window of the lounge. Um, I had been reading 
and asked him to stop swinging the pot as it could break the windows. Then Dennis came from around the corner where the parents now were and asked if we had any films for them to watch as this was what they had come to ask for. I felt sorry for them knowing what it must be like for with little but like for those with little life other than films and TV to be stuck with what was now considered entertainment. So I tried to think of something we might be able to give them. I knew it had to be, it would just be religious and flavour because that's all I had. But I decided it might be just what they needed and encouraged myself in the hope that they might be so desperate that they would watch it. And who knows what it might Bring. They were at our house after all, and that itself was a minor miracle. Okay. Okay. Then I've got. Then I was other dreams, but you don't need those. Then I dreamt I was playing some kind of game on a screen in the sky, and I could feel as the image changed and swirled that I was coming close to something huge. The last image were upside down and I had to turn myself upside down to be able to focus and discern the image. All the while I was being encouraged by onlookers to keep focus as they too knew something huge was about to happen and I was going to win the jackpot. Then I could see what it was and I was still up in the air looking on upside down vantage when I saw Aslam. He was huge, and I was able to touch him. At first I thought it was my Razzie, it's my dog Restus, but his coat was not soft like his. This was the real Aslam, a real lion, and his coat was rough. I touched his paws and ran my hands lovingly through his chest and groin area. I was ecstatic with joy, and he was enjoying my happiness. And then I was stretched out along his back. Okay. Still upside down, with my head and arms extended backwards as though we were a Tiffany type sculpture. Okay, Tiffany, God emerging. Aslam told me, and Trump's got a daughter called Tiffany. <laughs> Trump, sorry, who was Trump? Aslam told me repeatedly something huge was about to happen. The time is now for him to come. Something to this effect. Remember, that's what he told. You know, the Lord told me all through the night, my dreams. You know, that something huge was about to happen, and that happened two days after. You know, on the fourteenth of November, on um, after Trump had been elected, and that was. Okay, the same the same month that I showed. You know, that I filmed that amazing. Um, flashing sign. Aslam told me repeatedly something huge was about to happen. Happen the time is now for him to come. Something to this effect. I was with others in a semi-religious setting when Richard, this minister <coughs> from Christchurch, said something about praying for England as the motherland. And Richard also, I've written that down, that means something. It means king, ruler, strong, something, strong, brave. I don't know. Um, he says, says something about praying for England. I don't know if you've seen, look them up, the amazing, um, um, oh, golly, the amazing um, marches they're having over there. You know, so they are all just, you know, standing up at last and saying no more. Praise God. Okay, so then there's another one there that's very significant, but I'll just keep, and then there's another one too, and this was talking about what's, what we've been going through. This one here is Dennis was so, Dennis, yeah, your, hu your husband always represents God. So here Dennis was driving and I was passenger alongside a red car full of youths, drinking and drugged and they were driving erratically and I told them not to get too close to them even though it was night time it was light and I could see the cops looking and checking them off as we drove through the checkpoint I, wa I wondered why they didn't seem to see that they were under the influence and then I realized it was Saturday night in Wanganui and this was just normal so this is what we've been going through this time of absolute um, um, you know lawlessness so the, then after Aslam, 
So I've written up here, so I always forget it. I've got a thingy, so... Oh, goodness me, where are we? So after Aslam... Aslam told me repeatedly something huge was about to happen. The time is now for him to come, something to this effect. Then I've written, I also remember knowing or feeling that this time... Oh, hang on. Then I was still on his back as he was dying. I was at first feeling broken-hearted that they had killed him, but then he assured me that it had to happen, and I knew that that had to be true. So, of course, this is talking about Jesus when he had to die. Um, and maybe I just died with him. I can't recall. Um, but then I woke up and I found Dennis also awake with his hands on his chest beside me. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so then... I've written, also written, I also remember knowing or feeling that this time he cannot and will not die. Okay, so there we have it, both that, you know, obviously that's what the Lord is telling me, that um, that Trump is Jesus returned. And, um, okay, so this is interesting too, major asteroid to whiz by Earth on Sukkot, which I think Sukkot is, could be today or tomorrow, so... Um, is that um, so that this is a, a prelude to the Gog Magog War, as they're saying? But when have they ever got anything right? <laughs> um, so I hope you that, that that has given some of you some more faith in what I'm telling you um, and understanding why you know why Satan tried to kill me. You know, why did Satan try to kill me? You know, and, uh, you know, that whole year of 20, um, 2016, from, from Trump's election in 2016, when the Lord told me about the, you know, the, something huge was going to happen on the, on the Monday. So that was, you know, Trump's election, the, the, the birth of the child. Um, and then the next year, you know, on, in June, so it was the three, June 21 on, on the solstice, I had my death attack. Then on July, um, I, I, J July 21 or so, 27 or something, I filmed that Revelation Dragon come out. So this is what he didn't want me to see that. And then August, so it's for three months, June, July, August, we had the three months. Um, that was when you um, guys had the great American eclipse over across the USA and all the flyers and the floods started. And then September, September 23. So it's four months. The four months is the door, you know, and that was those four, four consecutive months culminating in the Revelation 12 sign in heaven, which I um, dreamt of. And, and that was interesting also when it's, if you notice, it talked about the trajectory. And it showed that it took 16 years. So that takes us right back. So I had signs, a sign every year. And I was just, that was what I was looking up for um, on my little camera the other day. So I have to look up for it again. So 16 years going back there takes us to um, 20, uh, was it? Oh, I'm not good with numbers, as you can see. <laughs> oh, 16 years, take off seeing that. What, what year is it now? 20, it's 21, isn't it? So, I don't know, you, you go figure it out. Is that 2011? So is that the actual year that that I, I filmed the, uh, what I called the... Um, Planet X, you know, that white, great big white globe, but it could have been, so that, that was in 2011, and, um, and then I had the year before that, and that's what I was looking for on my computer, which was, you know, I just accidentally, I, I took a photo of the oak trees, and over them were these white, um, oh, these, you know, it was only when I saw it on the big screen, when I looked at the picture on the big screen, I saw these um, orbs, and when I cl clicked onto the one orb, you know, I then saw another one. And, it, you know, we, so I magnified and looked at, you know, and there was like a whole convoy of these orbs over the oak trees. And that also um, reminds me of when it says here, rule Britannia, rule the waves, Britons will never be slaves. And it says here um, about the oaks. And that reminds me of, where is it? It reminds me of um, 
what 107 said about um oh, I never find it when I want to you heard it it talked about the oaks the land of the oaks um that um 107 said oh these people worship the oak trees that they worship the the green man the green man and I have a photo of the green man you know and the green man is so significant if you you know for me because it was when God showed me you know really the strongest after I became a Christian that I wasn't to trust any man at all and that if they were all wrong and God showed me the face of this of uh, the green man in a, in a tree you know and I took someone to, to see it and it was absolutely amazing but I just had this you know this presence the Lord was saying you know you, you know you believe you're right you're right and don't don't believe them but of course um People like um, 107, um, they are trying desperately to keep the status quo. They do not want us going back to our, what they call paganism, what the Christians, you know, called paganism, which was our connection with the earth. You know, like Robin Hood, if you look it up, Robin Hood is the story of Jesus. Jesus has been um, portrayed through every, you know, practical, every piece of art, you know, story that that we have, that his influence has just, you know, been so powerful. And that's why I'm saying it's right back to Apollo. You know, Apollo and Artemis, the, the, the temple of Artemis was, the Artemis was, you know, Apollo's sister. So Jesus and the, the little girl, you know, the girl is the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and that when the temple of Artemis, you know, when, when Jesus was born, it was it um, was said that the Delphi, the actual spirit of, of Delphi in the, in the temple of Artemis, went silent, and that was because the word had come in flesh. So each gener each different you know civilization have had a different form of the dying Christ, the Christ you know that God has sent to us all so that we could come back to God, you know, there's no way, I mean, do you really think that God only loved the generation of, of the Jews, you know, he wants, you know, he wants all his, um, I wish I could just find it, okay, it's just, oh, here it is, still more majestic, thou shalt rise, more dreadful from each foreign stroke, as the loud blast that tears the sky serves but to root thy native oak, Royal Britannia, rule the ways, Britons never will be slaves. And this is what we also want for America as well. This whole thing is because of your republic <coughs> and as, you know, as um, George Washington's um, vision, you know, showed, you know, the whole world was against the USA for one reason and one reason only because you are free not slaves and England um, <clears throat> has fallen into um, into slavehood they didn't know that the you know false kings have been on that throne ones that did not were not ordained by God and uh, God didn't want to give us a king but when he gave us a king he gave us King, king David and the, his kings, they had to be anointed, they had to be righteous, and they certainly didn't, um, you know, bomb, you know, carloads of children and aid workers. So praise the Lord that, uh, you know, you're, you're going through it all, we are going through it all, but we're going to come through, okay, you're going to come through, the USA is going to do it again. So I bless you all in his holy name and... Yeah, hope you understood what I'm saying and, uh, have, you know, that it lifts your heart and fills you with joy today to know that you have a mighty king and he's about to return. So I bless you all again. Bye-bye.